Welcome, hello everybody, once again here at Films. This, this are the podcast and uh, interviews we do in Biennale this year. And of course it's a privilege, at least for me, and a big pleasure to be with both important figures of Portuguese cinema, French Portuguese in this case, which is Maureen Facendeiro, Maureen Facendeiro, and Miguel Gomes. So, uh, of course, we are talking about di Diary of Otsuga. It's okay, my pronunciation? Uh, in English, yes. it's it, because... Tsugwa Diaries. Yeah, it's the Tsugwa Diaries, because it's uh. the, you know, the, wor the word in, in August in, uh, yes. in English, it gives Tsugwa. In Portuguese, uh, Agosto, it gives, and Spanish, it gives Otsuga. Yeah, that's the, my mistake but it's connected with the original name. So, um, be, before talking about the film, maybe we have to have in mind that this film has been done during the pandemic. In fact, in August, from half August to the first days of September to 20. And in, in this festival, we have shown a couple of films which were shown and were shot during the pandemic. One was the Nicote film, uh, which is uh, is connected with that. Another was Mr. Davis, Benediction, and uh, also Red, uh, the Red Rocket by um, by Sean Baker. But this one is the most is the film which address the subject, but in a very intelligent way. And that I think the main the main source of the film is a film about time. Uh, not only because the reverse of the title makes an idea that time goes back, there is a kind of chronology in reverse, the whole thing goes backwards, but also because the pandemia was a way to experience time and space in a different way. So I was wondering why you have chosen, first of all, to do the film in, in back, backwards, the narrative is in backwards, it starts the day 30, if I the day 22, 22. 22, and then it's going day so 7, 15, day, one. day yeah. 1. So why that? And uh, if I am correct, I think the basis of the film is how, to, how you portray that particular period of time on time. Both. Go ahead. Uh, no, I think it's, you're completely right. The result is that the film has something to do with the way we experience time during the first month of the pandemic. The days were all the same. We lost our marks uh, in time, in space. And so we entered this never ending day. Uh, and, and the film with the reverse chronology is a kind of translation of this uh, Mm -hmm. alteration in our perception of time. The truth is that we didn't thought about it in this conceptual way. We had we had very few time to make this film. We decided in May 2020 that we had to do something and we had to do it as, as soon as possible. And so we had very few months to prepare the film. We didn't write it and uh, most of the time it was more practical reasons that leads us to to the result you have in the film uh, you say it's a film about time but for example we also we think it's a film about being together and being with the others and this we had no idea it was a film about that before making the film it it appears because it was what what people needed to be back together or what being back together would uh, provoke in each person of, of the crew that made the film. Our idea was very simple. It was to make a film, mm -hmm. to make, to, to bring some people together to make it. Um, at the very beginning, we just met the actress in May 2020 and we talk with her about the situation, the fact that our project were uh, impossible to make, the fact mm. that uh, everything was cancelled, the fact that the government was not giving any help uh, for the workers, the artists and uh, cinema workers, theater, etc. And we decided, mm. let's do something, uh, just that. Because we had very few time, very little time, 
this let's do something, we decided to make a diary. We have no time to write. And so the diary was a very simple structure uh, that we'll, we could adapt to what will be happening in the shooting. We thought about what is the film possible to make now in this context. Mm -hmm. You know, we were receiving rules from the from the government, from the technicians uh, guild about what is what should be a shooting. And the only film possible was to make test, PCR test, lock ourselves in a house with the crew for a few weeks and try to make something uh, out of this. So that's what we made. And um, maybe Miguel wants to talk about the, the this reversed, uh, how came the practical reason of why yeah, we the, the decided to shoot in reverse chronology. You, you forgot to say that we didn't have much time to make the film because there was, well, we had the pandemic, but in our private life, we also had something which was, uh, we had a, 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 a baby coming, coming up. up, and so Maureen was pre uh, pregnant at that moment, and so we needed to shoot fast, because we didn't want to, you know, to have to make the film with Maureen uh, already, yeah, about to deliver the baby. Uh, but there was a, one of the things we brought to the house. One of the ideas was there was the diary idea that would allow us to integrate what was would happen in our life and. You have some some things in the film that are connected with that. I mean, big things like uh, you see when you see the film, you see that there was a problem with the, the pregnancy of Maureen, and she was obliged to be on the couch for most of the um, half, more than half of the shooting, the second part. Uh, but you also have, you know like daily things that happen. There was an actor that was... Uh, with a tooth. Uh, yeah, with a toothache. And we said, okay, let's uh, have this in the film because we don't know if in three days you'll be obliged to leave the house and you will appear without... with no teeth in your mouth. So... Uh, or... And, and so the film was available to all of these, and we wanted a diary. We knew that if it would be a diary, and one of the rules that was something very forbidden at that moment was intimate scenes with the actress, so a kissing scene uh, was something quite normal in cinema, in uh, normal times, but now it was a problem. And so we knew that if we were making a diary and we would film chronologically that diary, which is pretty much what you have in the film, it was more or less made uh, uh, in this way, uh, we would like to shoot in the, ne in the last day a kissing scene. Uh, because at that moment we would be for so long time in the house that the risk of having a COVID problem would, would be... Uh, not uh, not be lower this risk, no, and so um, and if we reverse the order, the chronological order, the film would start with a kiss. And as the film was uh, trying to uh, um, follow the the creative process of making a film, a collective process. <clears throat> that means if we started by the end, by the end, by the last day of the shooting, only focused on the actress, the film would, would start to open up because there would be a moment where we were not concentrated on the actress, but more in the beginning of the process, we would, you know, uh, to make a film, you get people together, you start to work on it, and then you start to focus on the scenes uh, that you want to shoot, to shoot on the actors, <coughs> as we were doing it backwards, the film would start to uh, be a film about this community that is making a film. Everything, uh, these scenes are so fictional, 
as a, even if it's about people making a film, <coughs> it's a completely fictional film. Even <laughs> if the film is based on our experience of being together on that house. And but even, and even that you are being called by the proper names because you are Miguel and Marie. But that that the actors. that yes. But in the beginning, not in the beginning, but in the end of the shooting, in the beginning of the film, mm -hmm. we said to the actors, "Don't call. Uh, I don't know what you, are your your names on the film. <coughs> Just don't say the names." And then, of course, we were filming. And they forget, or they, <laughs> it was impossible because they didn't have any characters. So the natural thing was, you know, when, when they are building this butterfly house, to say, Carlot, give me the hammer. So they could not avoid this shooting day after day. There would be always a moment they would call themselves by their own names. And then we said, well, we said we didn't want this, but this is the natural way, so they are right, they have to call... By the names. Yeah. <clears throat> there is something which is, uh, I think, is connected with, the, as you said, the experience of pandemic was uh, the, the, uh, how we perceive time and space was a little bit modified and little by little has been renormalized. One problem is that well, you have done before that two shorts. One is 42 minutes, the other seven minutes, more or less. So Negro and Motu, Maeva. And, uh, and, but in the case of Miguel, that his films are big adventures, big stories, stories that cannot be in a single place. It should be in the desert, in, 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 in different times. The challenge, I guess, was how to evolve a story when the space is always the same. And I think that, that is, must be a, a challenge in certain ways. I don't know how do you perceive that. Well, I don't know what you have to say about this, but we, we choose a place where, for instance, one very important thing was to have exterior scenes. Yes, that's quite clear. And uh, so, even if we are locked in a house, uh, there is a strong presence of nature in the, I mean, there's lots of trees, there's, we got lucky, so uh, there was always this breeze, this uh, wind <laughs> that would make the trees, the, the leaves move and, uh, and which is always beautiful in cinema, from the beginning of cinema, cinema was made up, also made up to, to shoot this, to shoot the movement of the leaves in the, and the shadows of this movement, which on film are particularly beautiful. No? Yes. And so we had these animals. One of the uh, things we had to do was to feed them. Um, then there were more animals because the crew brought their animals. So Carlotto, the actor, brought his two dogs. The script, what, <laughs> uh, one dog, dog, his own dog. There are five. There were, were two more in the house already. So animals, trees, nature. Uh, we had already something very uh, different than we had the experience of being locked yeah. inside an apartment, which was our case uh, during the real lockdown, the first one. It was like this, and and uh, so it was a second lockdown, but with all the things, or some of the things we missed in the real one, which was being have a space in the exterior and the pre the presence of nature, but also to be with other people, to be locked, but in a community, mm -hmm. and uh, so. Yeah, the the uh, the first film of Maureen, uh, Motumaeva, is also shot in one place. Yes. That is like an island. But then she uses um, Super 8 films that were there. So it's only one place, but then 
there are images of Africa yes. and China, and uh, so it explodes uh, for the world. Here, we could not, I think the film is like have, trying to have a balance between being locked down, like we were uh, for real, no? Every one of us. And also being uh, able to have these things that we uh, were missing in the first lockdown. So there's a kind of joyful feeling in the film because we were, are together again, living with other people, reconnecting uh, and uh, making, making a film. Uh, and at the same time, there is like, for instance, this shot of um, Krista, the actress, and she's like putting water in the plants, in the uh, butterfly house. And it's uh, a shot that we, we made in a, with a close-up. And so she walk, she's walking through plants and flowers and all seems very beautiful, like exotic, exotic and inside a, a forest or something. But we know that if we open up the, 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 the shot, if it's larger, she's inside the cage. So I think it, this was the two things that the film was trying to have as a balance. Uh, a little bit of a sadness uh, that we don't uh, underline, but uh, I think it's there. A sadness of being uh, in this time, living this thing but also a joyful feeling that was appeared by the fact that we were with other people and well, working together. There is a beautiful shot that you are up, up in, the, in the roof or something like that, and you say, oh, but the ocean is here. And you don't show that. The counter shot, we don't see if it is true or not, but it makes you, again, the idea of open space during the lockdown. So the whole thing is always working with the idea that the space is not uh, so near towards the, the perspective. There is something else. Mm -hmm. There is something which is outstanding for me, and I would like if you can tell us how it was shot. Is the, the day 15 is the moment that you're working on the, on, the, on the butterfly house. And it's outstanding because this is the moment that from the very beginning of the film we see mainly three characters. But this is the moment that other people start being in. And what is going on with the dogs in that particular scene is fantastic because one of the dogs, I think, is, um, I don't remember now the name. Tina? Uh, the other one. Uh, uh, Gurwe. 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 Is it sleeping and there? And somehow, when you, he or she uh, uh, stood up, she went away. And when you think the shot is going to be end, there is another dog <laughs> coming from from somewhere, following it, and then the shot is, is cut. When I was watching that, I think that was by chance. You prepare that shot. What is because it's extremely mysterious. Then, okay, this is the second time I heard this because yesterday someone told me the same thing about how the we dogs... We the dogs. Uh, it, and it was an, uh, a guy from Argentina. It was Gaston Solnik. <laughs> so maybe it, it is like an Argentine... Argentinian issue. But no, the, the, it happened that the dogs... Were amazing. Were amazing and they have a very good notion of timing. <laughs> uh, which is like with non-actors, even dogs, some of them are very good. Uh, I don't know why, but they... Uh, have the good moment, the good timing, and some of them are awful. And <laughs> we we did we had uh, very good uh, uh, non-professional dogs on the on the set. <laughs> and in fact, uh, as these two dogs are Carlotto's dogs, so is the last one to leave. There is this this woman that comes, uh, which is the first people with the first person we see outside these three characters but she, she there is it's it's the um, andresa that worked uh, uh, in the sets of the film uh, and uh, 
she's coming, but Carlotto is leaving. And so Carlotto uh, is the owner of the dog. So when he <laughs> left his, his, the, 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 yeah, the, the, the what the, they the, were the, looking, one of them went, went like this, and uh, the other yeah, they were, went too. But the, the timing is perfect. It's yeah, so yeah, I, I was uh, something that I like to ask you is the the chromatic decisions in the films, because there you work. There is a on one hand when the day is with a, the sun, this in a sunny day you take advantage of the sun, of course, but then you use lighting in a very uh, exp expressionist way in certain mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, the red, the theatrical way. Yeah. Yes, well, can you, this is in, it's beautiful for the eye. It's a pleasure for the eye, but it's also uh, a question for the mind. So, why you have chosen that? This, or why you have taken that decision? Yeah, it's it's quite simple. Uh, the, the answer the the days are DOP Mario Castaneda. He made uh, amazing work with light and shadows and and uh, with natural light. When we decided to make the film, the conversation I was talking about, we had with Krista. Her boyfriend, Rui Monteiro, is a light designer for theater. And he was with us on that night. We decided to make a film. And uh, on that night, we decided to make a film together. And so... You he, would come along. Yes, we he, thought we had, to, we had to invite him. He, he never worked on a shooting, he's not, he's, he's a technician, but for, for theater, for, not theater, cinema. for lighting uh, scene of mm -hmm. theater. We have to invite him, uh, it's perfect for us because we have a very small crew and we have not so many rooms, so we can share the, the room of the actress and he can do some lightings, so we can have more than only natural lights. And so he came with his uh, material that he used for the theater. And so that's how we think about having nights with uh, this uh, really uh, n not natural yeah. colored uh, night to give some work to Rui Monteiro uh, to, to do <laughs> during the shooting. Yeah. So then it was very simple because he, he would show us what was the possibility of this machine he had to, to program the lights and we we, each, you each night we would uh, choose colors with him and uh, and rhythm of the... Nor of normally this kind of uh, expressionist use of color is connected with the... Uh, narrative or... Uh, in narrative uh, things. Uh, uh, for instance, melodrama. Mm -hmm. We think about, for instance, uh, uh, Douglas Sark films and they have this kind of uh, colors and lighting and... Uh, and uh, here, uh, when the film starts, uh, you can think, okay, there is this artificial world of lighting that uh, appears in this film. Maybe it's connected, like, because in the beginning, the, the film looks like it is going to be about a, a love triangle. So there is yeah. emotions involved. And then with the evolution, you start to, to understand that, uh, no, it's not because of, you know, the feelings of the characters. It's because in this world of this film, it's like this, because cinema allows us to do, to create a world that doesn't look like our world. And of course, in the case of this film, the film was so close to our daily life, I mean, you know, Carlotto would say, okay, today I'm going to, to I wanted to wash my dogs. Can I, can I wash my dogs? And I don't know if you want to film that and say, okay, let's, let's do this. And it's lovely, by the way. And uh, so, so this is so like daily life, so connected with the, you know, routine things that we do. And of course the nights, they contrast with this, uh, very, um, you know, daily life uh, kind of uh, scenes we also have in the film because of this use of the lighting. I mean, it's not connected with the, you know, the inner uh, feelings of the characters. It's connected with the world of cinema uh, where you can have space for 
daily normal things and also to this uh, parallel world where you know the source of light uh, it's not the normal thing we have in the in our physical uh, world and you, you were asking about uh, how it was to make a film in uh, such a small space when for example Miguel's film or in the yeah oh, and when we make a film we invent a territory from it mm -hmm. can be from a small space yes, or a yes. big space we invent a territory and this territory has its own rule and in, in this case in this territory that we can call Otsoga which is yeah knights are with all these colors and they are with natural light I like that idea of the of that you have invented a territory and and, and you know and even the community if we were locked inside and so it was a restricted uh, area uh, and we could not leave but we seen the film now we editing the film we had there is one day which I, I particularly enjoy which is I think day four or, or something like this where it's where uh, this idea of space it opens and it almost in a cos cosmical way uh, you start yes, inside the, the the pool the swimming pool that the actors are cleaning and so you, you see a discussion about with them talk, talking about uh, dinosaurs the extinct animals and then you understand that they are uh, having a break in in the shooting because you see the exterior of the pool and there is the director <coughs> the director and the screenwriter and we start a discussion we let them shoot and we start uh, so the scale completely changes so it started with the faces of the actress then it's the directors and the screenwriters just walking until they got very little yeah. point uh, among the the palm oh. trees and so the scale completely changes and then uh, in the end of this scene we have a discussion about filming in a tractor or adapting uh, doing an adaptation of a Pavese novel and then we discovered a, a, queen, a queens uh, uh, and uh, so the next shot it's no humans already so just the queens and the time you know uh, changing accelerating and then you, you see the the actress seeing the the shooting stars in the in the sky so there is a kind of evolution so it's in a small space in a closed space but i think that this changing of the scale and ending with the stars in the sky so even in a closed space <coughs> you can get cosmical yeah 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 and it's it is good because on on the chronology is at the beginning but at the same time it's at the end of the film mm -hmm. That particular moment, uh, now that you have brought up the the object, the queens, mm -hmm. uh, th this is a, a, an iconic object, or not it's an object, it's a, a fruit, a fruit. Uh, in fact very tasty, during the whole film, because you see the, the, the fruit rotten, the fruit fresh, mm -hmm. um, and I cannot avoid myself to make certain connections with the El Sol del Membricio by Victor Erisen, which is a film about time. time also. So you had that in mind or was just... We, we wonder when we found the... the we queen. really found the queen <laughs> in that scene, yes. in that scene where we walk, we didn't know at the end we would find the queens. There was and there. those queens three and Miguel said, oh, is it an apple? What is that? What is it? <laughs> we said, no, it's queens. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and we thought, can we shoot a queens after Victor Erice? Can <laughs> we do that? Yeah, but it was by accident. If there was a, really an apple tree there, it would be an, an apple, apple, not a queens. Uh, because in, in this scene, we are like having this discussion of what to film on the, uh, to do next tractor pavese uh, and then i my character because we were improv improvising 
I want to avoid the discussion of Pavese, uh, so I <laughs> just say, oh, this is a quince, not to change the subject. <laughs> and so it was really what happened in that moment. We didn't have the idea to to, to yeah. pick up the, the, the fruit and, and then... Uh, but then when we cut the... the <laughs> we said, it's done. We, I don't know who, if it was you or me or Mariana, we said, and wh why not uh, filming this fruit to get, uh, getting uh, rotten? Because then I remember that the first time we went to visit the house, there was a, a, an apple nearby the door where we shot then the greens, mm -hmm. and the apple was fresh. And when we came back to shoot, two or three weeks later, the apple was already rotten. And mm -hmm. I told them, ah, time here is very fast to rotten fruits, you know. So let's let's make this experience to see how long it will take if we during the shooting. To, to have this rotten queens. And so it was very fast, then every two or three days we would shoot the queens. But of course, uh, El Sol del Membrillo, it's a, a film that we both uh, love. And of course, then after having the idea, <laughs> we said, okay, we are, <laughs> we'll have yeah. some problems with Eritrea. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but it was like this, it was fight. It was fate that brought us to yeah. this uh, tree, so it was a, a, a queens, and we accept uh, our fate. We it accept is. our fate. Um, there is something very interesting in certain moments, which is connected with your character. There, there is a discussion towards between the meaning of a character and the action. So when there is no a precise idea of a character what kind of action the character can do. Because it seems to be there is a circularity between what a character is following and finally is, which is connected with she or he does. But here there is a problem because it's not exactly described. So that moment in the film is very interesting because it shows something about cinema that it could be thought in different ways. There could be a character without action, or there could be an action without a character. Because I think it's consciousness at that mm. moment in the film. Could you say something about this? I think the, the characters, uh, there is, yeah, the, 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 the uh, how do you say, the frontier between, uh, yeah. between being a character or being someone with a certain personality and the in this case was very there was no distinction so yes. <laughs> so filming uh, these three guys for instance the three actors i mean there was i think they were acting all the time even if they hadn't any characters they were acting a part of themselves so in, in fact uh, carlotto is uh, yeah kind of uh, he changes his, his mood uh, very quickly. He's kind of chaotic. He's, there is moments where he's very silent. There is moments where he's talking a lot. And he's like this. And this appears on the film. So the character is this part of Carlotto. And Krista is uh, very organized and wants to... She's a, a little bit, bit like the, the, the chief of the union of the actress. <laughs> And she and she's very pretty much like one side of her. It's like you see in the film, and uh, João uh, is uh, yeah, is even physically is like the opposite of uh, Carlotto. He cannot uh, put uh, uh, he picks up the hammer to put a nail and he fails. Uh, so it is very fragile, and so. Uh, these are the characters uh, in, that have ca characteristics of the actors. And we didn't talk to, in the film, uh, it's fiction, so it appears that we, we did talk a lot about that with the actors. But no, it was not a, an issue. They accept the rules, they accept the fact that uh, we would work on this level of uh, something that was not very defined. And without saying nothing, 
they invented for themselves what kind of uh, presence they would have on the film. And even if we are discussing discussing in the film that uh, there is no characters, I think they are mm -hmm. have yeah. characters. They are acting even in that scene where they, we are having this discussion of them don't don't have any characters. They are playing at the most. I mean, <laughs> Carlotto is, is in, he decided <laughs> just to eat chips like a, a crazy guy, <laughs> and. <laughs> Uh, uh, Krista is doing the chief at the union, <laughs> and the other guy looks completely helpless with his uh, two take, and uh, so they are playing characters. And uh, <coughs> we didn't have even to talk a lot about this because they, we turned on the camera and they would. There is a, there is a uh, as you might know because we have spoke before. Uh, I always have considered the importance of animals in your films. I, I, in this I cannot refer to you because you have two shorts, which I love, and this is your first feature okay. film. And uh, th there is a moment which I think it's, it's, a, it's a kind of finding or, or no, a revelation, maybe it's too, it's too heavy symbolically as a word, but uh, it is the moment that you start thinking about the memories as a something which is from sound. And, 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 and you sp began speaking on, on the parrots. Uh, can you tell us okay. a, little, a little about this? I found it very interesting to... to the idea. Yeah, we ne no, indeed never got this uh, question. Too, yeah. It's a good one. Yeah, for us, you do. No, but it's true that the parrots were making those sounds of things that happened in the house yeah, before this. Yeah, that's the reason. There were, for instance, there, these uh, uh, parrots, they were making the sound, you know, of, well, I don't know even how to say it in English, one of these machines <laughs> that <laughs> digs, oh, okay. and when it, it's like in reverse, going, beep, it, beep. she does, <laughs> And the, the, the parrots were, so <laughs> we understood, okay, these uh, parrots, they, uh, they, there was here some construction, I don't know what kind of uh, thing happened here, but there was these machines. Uh, it's impossible that uh, this parrot uh, invented this by himself, so. There was the presence of these and machines. And they were here. calling the names of the people from the family of the house. And at the end of the shooting, they were calling the names of some people from the crew. They, they were saying action. <laughs> In the end, the parents were saying action. <laughs> and cut. Uh, <laughs> this is and uh, so, yeah, it, it was really happening. The, the, in, the next, the guys, the owners of the house, when they'll come back, they will have the presence of cinema. Because of these parrots will say, uh, action and cut. <laughs> and so first, it, this is true. The yeah. first cinephiles <laughs> from that world. It's, uh, just in order to be finished, because it's, I think it, there should be a moment to say, done, and it's enough. There is a mysterious moment, which is uh, the, a dog is missing, and everybody's crazy, looking for them. But there is a, king, a change of texture, and uh, it's also a kind of camera in hand movement, which is absolutely different from the whole conception, the compositions, the way to, you understand the framing. I, well, I, I was wondering that particular why? scene, why you have chosen to, to add it. I think that, uh, I mean, the movement is, uh, I think, it's one of the moments you are connecting Space. So mm -hmm. the movement, we didn't have the, you know, the people to do, you know, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, tracking okay. shots. Uh, so, so it was handheld camera. And for instance, you understand, for instance, when they are, the actors are looking for the dog, that the house is like circular because they, go into a direction and they return mm -hmm. and they get to the same room. So we are a little bit connecting space in this. Uh, the 
looking for the dog was something that we, I think every two days, <laughs> this dog, uh, Carlotto, uh, would do this. So it was something that we had in our uh, life. And there was this concern because sometimes the, the doors were open at the property. Mm -hmm. And one, once he ran away, so we were looking to see the dog still is here or he is like uh, roaming in the exterior. And uh, so we had this scene, and of course, <coughs> in this scene, uh, the dog, when you find the dog, the dog is uh, close to these new characters that appear, because the film, at that moment, it starts to open and open, and it's not only about the people that are inside, there are these two guys that we didn't explain on the film, but it's a father and a son from Moldavia, and uh, they appeared on the film. They were not, we never thought about having them. And they, so as we shot chronological, the first, which is the second, they appeared two times. But the first time we shot with them, it's the last you see in the film, uh, it was when, when the actors are cleaning the swimming pool. So the production said to us, okay, we'll have these technicians. And we thought, okay, there will be like these specialists. And it was these guys. Uh, that were were living around and they did everything. So the second time you see them, they are uh, repairing the tractor that may, uh, we like you will see. <laughs> yes. probably we, we did something wrong with the tractor. And so they are trying to repair. And we didn't decide that to, when I was seeing the actors, you know, to, trying to clean this pool very dirty and they were really like no do you, you really want, want me to go inside and uh, and then there was these guys that didn't care about this and they were cleaning the, the, the pool and when I saw this I said okay let's do I said to Maureen and what about if we shoot these guys these guys are amazing let's do actors against uh, Moldavians. <laughs> um, so it, it was the, the, how we decided to shoot with them. And the second time is repairing the tractor and being with the dog. So uh, sometimes there are details in a scene. They, they don't appear to be the most, uh, I mean, the center of the scene, more. but it's these details that will give the connection for later on. For instance, this is the first time you see the tractor, but you don't care about the tractor. You just care who are these two characters speaking Roman, uh, Romanian, and uh, you see the dog, of course, but you don't see the tractor. And then the tractor appear later. So things are connecting, but sometimes there are only details in the, it's not the center of the scene. On the whole film is about details in certain ways. Yeah, I agree. And uh, and if you it's, if we put attentions towards the details, the film is it gains more richness and and layers, and uh, because the music, the light, we had been going around the details of the film. We are not talking about uh, Sherezade, even though that she's there in certain ways. So I think it's enough, if you think so. I think it's good. It's good, and uh, it has been a pleasure to be with both Maureen and Miguel. And behind the camera is Sebastian, who is from Chile originally, and is a very good guy also. He could be a parrot of this situation. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.